Hello friends, it is May 27 and we are about to cut some hay. So as you can see, it is beautiful and sunny today. It's currently about 66 degrees. All the dew has already gone. There's a nice breeze. Uh, this is gonna be a beautiful drying day because it's gonna be hot and partly sunny over the next few days. So I'm gonna take you in this video uh, just through the entire uh, hay making process with me. I don't typically make a lot of videos like this, but uh, I love this field. It's some really nice grass. I want to show you what we've got going on. This field right here is only about five acres, but it's what I call one of my flagship fields because this has received the most amendments um, and it is generally just the nicest mix of grass. As you can see, it's extremely thick, very thick. We've got a little bit of alfalfa in there, um, a decent amount of clover. We've got some orchard grass and a whole bunch of Kentucky bluegrass, which doesn't yield as great, but it does give you really nice soft hay. I'm excited to mow this. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna make some really nice hay. Look at all that leaf in there, tons of leaf. What you'll find is if you don't fertilize your fields well, you just get stem and there's no leaf associated with it. And the leaf is really what gives you that soft texture and all the nutrient for your livestock or your horses to eat. Otherwise, it's not gonna have a lot of feed value. It's just gonna be stem and you're basically making straw. Today we're mowing with the trusty 4610 and 488 haybine. I'm gonna mow one lap around with the mower to the outside. And then I'm gonna turn the tractor around and then mow to the mower to my outside. So I'm turning right instead of left this time. So first time I'm gonna be taking left turns, mower on the outside of the field. I'm gonna turn around and then track to the right with my mower to the inside of the field. Some guys don't like to mow with the mower to the outside in case there's sticks or something, but this field, I mow around the edge of it and I know everything that's there, so it's safe. Once I get six laps around the outside, I'm gonna cut straight down the middle. And when I get to the end, I'm gonna turn around and drive right through the area I mowed and come back and turn around again and go back down and keep opening that up until it gets wider and wider. Once it gets wide enough that my two ends on this side are close enough together, I'll go and mow down this side, come over, go down the other side, come back down this way until that's all completely gone. And then I'll come over and do the same here. Come down here, go to the outside, mow that, come back down and just keep going like this until that side's done. So let's get started.
just ran him over with the freaking tractor. Didn't even see him, he was hiding right there. God dang it. Crap. All right, so I'm trying to get this guy to walk. Come on, buddy. Can you do it? Can you walk? His little heart's beating so fast. I don't know if this is what they're normally, I don't know if this is normally how they walk or not, but I didn't feel any broken things in his pelvis. I've called one of my friends <clears throat> who's a veterinarian, does love wildlife rehabilitation. I don't want him to suffer if he isn't hurt, but I don't want to end it for him prematurely, even though I'll probably come out and shoot him later this year when I'm deer hunting. Um, I can hear Mama back in the woods just losing her freaking mind. So I think what I'm going to do is set him off to the side and finish mowing. I just, I really don't feel anything <coughs> broken in there. So I'm going to set him off to the side and give him a fighting chance and I'll check on him when he's done and hopefully he can make it out of this um, okay. I actually bought my drone with one of the intentions to go scout these fields before I mow them because the fawns do get in here. A couple of years ago, I hit one, filleted it right in half, um, and you feel bad doing that. And um, right as I was driving along there, I thought, you know, I should have surveyed this with my drone, but the grass was short enough. I thought I could see if there's something in there, and so I was watching real close. Well. Literally, the second I was thinking that, I started hearing that bleating, and I thought, crap. And I didn't see anything under the mower, but I stopped and got off the tractor, walked around behind me. Right there in the tractor tracks is where this guy was laying. So I don't know if I hit him, and then he crawled into the tractor tracks, or if I actually drove over him with, drove over him with the tractor. I would have to think, if I had actually drove over him with the tractor, he'd be completely obliterated. So maybe he's just scared, and he's young and can't walk right, so... Um, I hope that's the case and that he's not suffering. I'm going to give him a fighting chance, but this really sucks. And I'm just going to walk along here. This tree line is really where all the fawns come out. Um, I'm just going to walk it and uh, not take the time to get the drone out. Just to make sure there's no other guys hiding in here, uh, because there's typically about two. I've got my six laps cut all the way around the outside. So now what I'm going to do is go to the center of the field and I'm gonna start my cut right down the middle of that, turn around and come back and keep going back and forth down the center to open that up. Here I've started opening the middle up and I'll continue going back and forth down the middle until it's going to be less of a travel time in the headlands to mow the outside plots. That is just such beautiful hay. I'm getting excited just looking at it. I'm not going to show you this one but I'm stopped because I just mowed up a fawn. Um, this one I did feel, the last time I mowed one I didn't feel it but I felt the mower bog down. And I went back there and the hide and all the guts are wrapped around the axle and there's a little bit in the windrow. So I got to go find a stick and clean it off. It's kind of gross and I don't want that to end up in someone's hay. This is where I laid that fawn earlier I found. He's not here anymore. Could he really ran out to there and I just got him again? God dang it. I hope not. Welcome back. It is day two and we're out here. We're going to Tad now. It is partly cloudy or partly sunny, depending on which way you want to look at it, and about 80 degrees, so it's going to be a great dry day. 
the grass is dry and crispy on top. Still a little wet and uncured on the underside. So that's why we're gonna go through and tet it out and get all the stuff dried out today. It's kind of, it always amazes me just how much it shrinks down when it dries out. When I mowed it yesterday, those windrows look huge. And when you lose all of that volume from the water that just evaporates into the air as it dries down, the windrows just shrink down to nothing. Well, there's, there's definitely some good stuff out there. But no further ado, let's get started. Again, we're using the trusty Ford and the tether today. And the reason we ted is that it will take all that hay and spread it out, flip everything up, or I should say expose everything that's on the bottom of the windrow. So it makes the hay cover, it get full coverage across the field. That way it all can dry. It'll take about a day off the drying time. Let's do this. Here's our fully tetted field. I love the look of that hay. So green, so beautiful. All of you guys that watching this at home right now who regu regularly do hay, you can smell this video. For those of you who've never done this before, you have no idea what you're smelling right now or you have no idea what you're missing right now because this smell is absolutely amazing. And while the hay is down curing like this, this entire street smells like curing hay and it smells like it on the porch. It's a beautiful thing. And this is what we're looking at here. I'm betting this will actually be dry enough to bale tonight because it's just about dry enough to bale now. Well, it's the end of the day today. It's about six o'clock after I tetted it. And this stuff is super crunchy dry ready to be baled it should be baled now it's gonna be too dry it's by the time I rake it it's gonna be too much dew starting to set in later and I won't have time to get it all baled so I'll have to do that tomorrow but it's not stopping the little one from partaking in it that's my apron says day three it is raking and baling day and the grass the hay is real nice and crunchy i don't know if i can demonstrate this with one hand but one way you can tell if it's ready to go is you break it in half and it makes a nice crisp crunchy sound and it kind of just cracks in half it doesn't feel like a wet noodle or anything like that anyway i'm gonna hop on the tractor and we're gonna start raking
raked up. Big, fat, fluffy green windrows. And we're going to start bailing now. Well, she's all done and we got 240 some bales out of there two wagons there got another parcel wagon there some really pretty hay let's get closer yeah this stuff is primo I'm gonna end up keeping most of it for myself just because this will make good horse chow Real nice and leafy, super soft. It's not very stemmy at all. I love it. Well, there you have it. That is the entire hay and cycle for one field. Gives you an example of what we do. This field took us about an hour and a half, yeah, about an hour and a half to bale up. We bale about 200 bales an hour. So if you figure 240 bales, hour and a half, the math adds up, it's about right. Anyway, I guess that's a wrap for this time. Hope this was useful. Hope it was informative or at least enjoyable. Hit like, subscribe, notify, all that crap. If you wanna see more, I've got more, uh, hopefully interesting videos on the way, but I got to keep going, get this stuff put away. So peace out for this time. Uh, see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching.